to AC 24 7. I'm Aaron Dean. May 24th marks one year since a gunman entered Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas and murdered 19 children and two teachers. Visuals and events will be held to honor the victims. The Advocate Channel's Laura Gure joins us as questions linger about the widely criticized police response that day. Beautiful but sobering church bells tolling for the 19 children and two teachers killed at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, one year ago. Yes, Survivors, families, loved ones, and community members gathered to find comfort, peace, and unity. Annabelle, A butterfly release sent their grief and love skyward. Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordered the state's flags flown at half-staff. In a statement, he called for a moment of silence to honor the victims and their loved ones who endure. Despite an outpouring of support, many of the victims' families still struggle with the unknown. The answers have not been provided, so there's no sense of healing, no sense of closure. Questions and anger linger about the widely criticized 77-minute police response that day. People refuse to accept the facts. They refuse to acknowledge their their incompetence basically and th that information will eventually come out in you know, the litigation through attorneys and stuff like that while answers remain elusive for many of the families their uvalde strong bond is clear if anything good came out of this that's that's one good thing i mean we all love each other and, and, and we're there for each other we stand with each other i'm laura aguirre reporting Florida Governor Republican Ron DeSantis will announce his 2024 presidential campaign Wednesday night on Twitter. According to a spokesperson for his political team, the announcement will happen during an online conversation with Twitter owner Elon Musk. Tech entrepreneur David Sachs will moderate the discussion on Twitter Spaces, where anyone can listen and request to ask a question. DeSantis is expected to file the formal paperwork for his candidacy this week. The clock is ticking down to a U.S. default as negotiations to reach a debt ceiling deal continue. House Republicans are insisting on spending cuts before agreeing to raise the debt ceiling past $31 trillion. Speaker Kevin McCarthy says that talks are productive, but there can't be any more progress until Democrats agree to spend less money next year. But the extreme MAGA Republicans in the House have rejected it because they have adopted a perspective that it is my way or the highway. That is unacceptable, unreasonable, and un-American. Democrats also argue that Congress must be allowed to repay America's debt holders without an embarrassing and economically disastrous default. It is not entirely clear when the U.S. will officially run out of cash, but it could happen as soon as June 1st. Federal student loan borrowers are eyeing Washington anxiously as a vote on a bill could repeal President Joe Biden's sweeping student debt relief program. The Advocate Channel is looking at the vote, the road ahead for borrowers, and how to navigate it. Republicans again taking aim at President Joe Biden's plan to forgive billions of dollars of federal student loan debt. Department of Education has vastly overstepped its authority. No debt has been canceled yet under Biden's proposal to offer forgiveness of up to $20,000 for about 40 million low and middle income borrowers. Nearly 90% of eligible borrowers live in households earning less than $75,000 a year. The plan is also under consideration by the U.S. Supreme Court, who heard two challenges arguing overreach by the Biden administration. Their ruling is expected as soon as next month. But for those who haven't made a federal loan payment during a three-year pandemic pause, Mark Kantrowitz, who has written multiple books on the student financial aid process, says to pay attention and get plans in order. Borrowers may get forgiveness or they may not get forgiveness. Um, they should plan for the restart of repayment regardless. The Biden administration says payments will resume soon, the exact date pending the Supreme Court ruling. And current borrowers could also feel the fallout of a potential U.S. default on its debt if a deal to raise the debt ceiling isn't reached. A default would prevent the federal government from spending money on 
uh, federal student aid like the Pell Grants and issuing new loans. A prolonged default potentially delaying federal loan disbursement for the fall semester. The Texas State House failed to advance a bill that calls for the Ten Commandments to be displayed in public schools. Senate Bill 1515, authorized by State Senator Phil King, died this week. Lawmakers couldn't come to terms for a vote prior to the deadline. King wanted the commandments to be placed in each classroom where the words could be seen from various viewpoints. However, the bill was criticized by religious and civil liberties groups. The Texas legislative session is still open until May 29th, so there is a chance the bill could come up again. The California Attorney General's office will review the fatal shooting of Banco Brown. That includes the decision against charging a security guard in the incident that left the alleged Walgreens shoplifter dead. According to Brown's family attorney, the AG's office sent a letter saying that it will review the case to determine if the decision was an abuse of discretion. This comes after the attorney sent a letter to the attorney general's office last week requesting an investigation. The AG's office later confirmed in a statement that it has agreed to review the case, but has not responded to a request for further comment. No timeline was shared on when the investigation will be complete. A Massachusetts father and son are headed to prison for a multi-million dollar lottery scheme. Ali and Youssef Jafar were accused of illegally claiming more than, check this out, $20 million in lottery winnings. Prosecutors say that they then lied on their tax returns to dodge more than $6 million in federal taxes. This week, the 63-year-old Ali was sentenced to five years in prison. His 29-year-old son, Youssef, was ordered to spend a little over four years behind behind bars. They also must pay over $6 million in restitution and forfeit their profits from the scheme. New HIV infections are trending down in the United States. That's according to the CDC. The report shows that there were about 32,000 new HIV infections in 2021. That's a 12% drop from 2017. Among gay and bisexual men ages 13 to 24, annual infections were down 34% during those years. Currently, the CDC estimates that about 1.2 million people in the U.S. have HIV and about one in eight don't even know they have it. Around one in five women at the age of 50 are affected by osteoporosis. It's a disease that weakens bones, allowing them to break easy. But there are things that you can do at any age to help prevent weakened bones. Mandy Gaither has ways to keep your bones strong as you get older. It rarely has symptoms and many don't even know they have osteoporosis until a bone is broken after a minor fall or bump. It's not a painful condition, but it can make your bones more fragile and prone to fracture, um, which is why falls can be so devastating in older individuals, hip fractures, other fractures, etc. Dr. Amit Shah with Mayo Clinic says healthy bones need an adequate amount of calcium and also vitamin D, whether that's spending a short time in the sunlight or taking a supplement. For most people, he says that would be one to 2,000 international units. Everyone wants a quick pill. If I just take some vitamin D or if I take some medicines, won't I be able to just keep my bones strong? And yes, there's roles for all of those things, but it's important to do some of the things that are good for the rest of your health. That includes not smoking, limiting alcohol, and focusing on weight-bearing exercises that can help with balance and muscle strength. Water aerobics can be great even if you have arthritic knee, knees or, or, or hips, um, and so that can help quite a bit. Shaw says women and men should be screened for osteoporosis. The recommended age varies based on risk factors. Gives people an idea of what's the density of your bones and, and gives you an idea of, well, do you need some of the medications that we have that do help to treat osteoporosis? For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And thank you for joining us for AC 24-7. For more, go to theadvocatechannel.com and subscribe on our Advocate Channel YouTube page. For AC 24-7, I'm Aaron Dean.